At the weekends, she loves to do some rallying or some track work in this lovely pair of Porsches. Other times when she fancies a drive, there's another selection, four gorgeous cars. She loves them all, but she does feel she should do her little bit for the planet and everybody needs four seats from time to time. So she also has this, the Porsche Taycan Turbo S. The Fist de Neon in-game is modelled very closely on the Porsche Taycan. If we compare a little to the Porsche configurator, you can see the rear end is pretty close. They've certainly put a lovely light bar on there. As we move around to the sides, the main difference perhaps is there's no blade behind the front wheel for real. It's more of an extraction vent, so they've changed the detailing there. As we approach the front, we can see there are some detailed changes with the headlights, however, they are at least still recessed and certainly some changes with the grille. But overall, I would say they've got the car pretty close. I'm sorry, but for the drive, it's bye-bye to the music because the car is electric, both in game and in real life. And as such, it's so quiet, we need to hear something. I struggled a lot to start with uh, with the cornering on this car, often making an unintended arrival into the scenery. I had to actually go around a track, which we'll see later, to work out really what was up with the car. But in the end, I think, oh, and here's the first off, <laughs> I think it's a rock star joke because cars like this use regenerative braking. They often don't need such big physical brakes, and I think I say Rockstar, I've had a little joke and just given the car really very weak brakes. So you brake when you think you should, you don't wipe off the speed and the end result is an unintentional interface with something sometimes quite solid. Now in every other aspect, this is a really lovely car to drive. If you've ever driven a powerful electric car, you'll realise how the acceleration differs so much from a conventionally engined car with all the torque available all the way through the rev range, no pauses for gear changes, and of course, almost no noise, just the roar of the tires, really. This is all duplicated very well, as is the low top speed. This has a, a lower top speed than most other cars in the sports class, which is where it's based, because most electric cars do have a low top speed. A nice touch if you drive from the internal view is the right hand gauge shows whether you're using the battery or regening the battery. Anyway, she's pretty fed up with what she's done to the front of this car thanks to the puny brakes. So she's decided just to go off and take a little flight in the helicopter and forget all about it. I mentioned earlier that I had to do quite a few laps of this track just to get a real grip on how the car goes round the corners. It's a four-wheel drive car, just like last week's car, the Jugular, so the same applies that you need to be slow in and fast out of a corner. Of course, in this case, you are slower in because you have to brake a lot earlier. That was the thing that gave me the most trouble, was learning when to brake. You're also faster out due to the pull of the electric motor. However, overall, it was, at least in my rather incapable hands, about a second slower than the Jugular at 57 and a half seconds for the faster laps. But it's a real joy when you go over pavements like I just did. It's never really deflected from its course. No skipping or hopping like a lot of cars. That in itself just makes it so nice to drive. Once it's hooked up into the corner, you'll often get little bits of oversteer. It's just the whole thing is just a lovely feeling car to drive despite the need to brake early. I rate it very highly for driving. To recreate my car, you want to take all the performance to maximum, go ice white over an ice white pearl, screenshot this. If I've not shown it, you can leave it stock. And according to Porsche, the mirrors can be black or white. I'm running out of time to rate this car, but I give it five stars for its looks, four stars for its driving, but just three stars for value. I think one and a half million dollars is quite a lot. 
This showcase was a subscriber request, in fact, so you know who you are. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's a car you'd like me to cover, please do put that down in the comments below. I'm glad I managed to finish the showcase without mentioning range anxiety or the horrific charging infrastructure in the UK. Thank you so much for watching.